morning, afternoon, and night to everyone around the world. It's an honor to be part of the YSP 2024 of the Blue Marble Space Institute of Science. Uh, well, uh, today it's Sierra Sebaldia and my person, Daniela Quesapanta, are going to present about the classification of Carbonaceous meteorites uh, using machine learning. And this project was directed by Dr. Henderson Jim Cliffs, Dr. Aniha Prapu, and Dr. Huan Chen. Well, um, to start, uh, what are Carbonaceous meteorites? Carbonaceous meteorites are a type of stony meteorite that contain high uh, amounts of water and organic compounds. They are classified into several groups, uh, with uh, most famous being uh, like CI, CM, CO, CV, and CR types, each uh, with different chemical compositions and mineralogies. Uh, their mineralogical composition is thought to uh, reflect their formation and evolution during the early history of the Euler system. Uh, in this slide, uh, we can see a sample of meteorite. Uh, this sample was collected when it got into the atmosphere into the Earth and fell in the coast of Ecuador in uh, 2008. Since that year, this meteorite was classified as a chondrite. Uh, this uh, sample is uh, from um, the EP S in the EP EPMs Museum in my university uh, here in Quito, Ecuador. Uh, well, so what is a chondrite? Why a chondrite? Uh, the geological significance Carbonaceous meteorites are considered to be among uh, the most primitive and unaltered materials in the solar system. Uh, studying them provides insight into the conditions that prevailed in the early solar system over uh, 40.5 billion years ago. Uh, their composition uh, reflects the original material uh, from uh, the planets, um, the moons, and the, obviously our solar system uh, that uh, was the bodies formed. Uh, composition and mineralogy uh, of these meteorites are composed of various minerals such as olivine, pyroxene, and other phyllosilicates like uh, clay minerals, along with uh, carbon-rich compounds. They often contain chondrules, which are small, like we see in this case in the in the sample. That's why uh, the name of these samples, chondrites. Uh, well, uh, these round particles that form into the early solar system and the presence of water and organic uh, material suggest that these meteorites were not uh, exposed to high temperatures and uh, likely um, organ organized uh, from uh, primitive asteroid asteroids that uh, form far from far from the sun. Uh, so, with this intro introduction in our project. Uh, well, to identify these uh, rocks, these space rocks, uh, we use the sample hand and the thin section to identify the minerals and to get the a specific classification of these uh, samples. In geology, with, uh, we, we do that. So, um, in, the, in the graph that we see um, in the below part, uh, we see the process of the formation of the chondrites, right? And the objectives of the old project is to analyze the data that was collected by Dr. Hanchen and analyze all the organic, uh, organic contents of these CCs. Then uh, we try to classify all of these meteorite samples that we have to study, obviously, and uh, try to take a main process to classify in a specified way. Well. Hello, can you guys hear me? Okay, good. So hello everyone, my name is Itzir Suelia and I was really excited to participate in this project this summer. I will say that uh, the methodology was divided in three phases. Um, and today I will walk you through. So the first number one was data organization. And basically what we did was start with the data that was uh, 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 measured by the FTI 
CRMS at the National High Field um, uh, National High Field Laboratory in Tallahassee, Florida, right? And those included uh, solvent um, extracted organics of 24 different samples of different type of uh, meteorites. And those, we had a few carbonaceous meteorites, merchant meteorites, and some synthetic uh, laboratory analogs. After we had the data, we made a few plots and those we had um, summable mass spectrum. Uh, those helped us um, analyze and visualize mass differences. And we had Kendrick mass defect plots with CH2 and other Kendrick masses. Those helped us identify homologous series in the spectrum. And the ones that I worked on, they were two different types. I worked on the 3Ds and those were bank equivalent plots. And those, uh, the, for the 2Ds, they used uh, hydrogen over carbon and oxygen over carbon. And for the 3Ds, we used, uh, we, uh, we added uh, nitrogen over carbon. Those helped us visualize uh, the atomic ratios. And we had uh, also mass different networks plots and elemental ratio plots. Those gave us more like an inside of what we were gonna work on over the summer. Um, if we can move to the next slide. Okay, so the phase number two, after we got the data, we have to make some code. And at first it was a little time consuming just to, you know, plugging each, each uh, uh, raw data one by one, all that stuff. So we decided to automize the process. And what we did, we wrote a Python script that not only took the data from the directory, from the, the one uh, that downloaded uh, raw data. So it, plot, it, it pulled the information from the directory. It made the plots and all the different graphs that we needed. And on top of that, it saved them as an HTML file that uh, helped us uh, access more efficiently and share within the, all the participants in the project. And that saved us a lot of time and effort, honestly, and helped us uh, to focus more on the third phase that I'm not gonna explain until I show the, a few of the different plots. So this is this uh, summable mass, mass spectra plots. Those are the ones that Daniela worked on. And then we have the, that's how they look like. And then we have the 3D uh, bank equivalent plots. And this is how they look like after, those are the HTML files that were saved from the code. And then our third phase will be the most exciting part of the whole project, honestly. I really like enjoyed it. Uh, and that was the machine learning part. So in this one, um, the analysis, okay. In this one, um, we use a principal component analysis or also known as PCA to simplify and see the trends. And one of the big results was, was the, uh, the one on the uh, left, and that is called uh, PCA reduced hierarchical clustering dendrogram. And in this one, we could see all the 24 samples uh, together based on similarities. We also apply K-means clustering of PCA reduced data, and those showed us uh, more of a clear clusters. And also our team produce uh, novel data visualizations of heat map maps, and those are all the way on the top. In those, we could see the organic content of the various samples overlap each other. And that gives us more of an insight of their similarities and differences within each other. And I, I believe that this machine and, uh, learning and clustering techniques really helped us see things that it wouldn't have been obvious otherwise. And those will be a nice tool for the next uh, summer YSP to, you know, further analysis, all the data that we have and that we have uh, obtained. That was my summer. I really enjoyed it. Thank you, YSP. And I will leave you guys with Daniela with further conclusions. Thank you. Thank you, Itziar. Well, uh, the importance in this study of the early Sarah system, obviously, with the meteorites provided treasure trove of information about the the our solar system and the astrological importance of information. Um, in, in this case of the carbonaceous meteorites are also critical 
in the study of astrobiology. As they contain a wide variety of organic molecules, some of these compounds are essential to, to life as we know it. And their presence in meteorites suggests that the building blocks of life uh, could be widespread in the universe. Some scientists propose that such meteorites may have played a, an important role in the delivering these organic compounds to the Earth, contributing to the origin of life, as some scientists uh, here in the BMCs, for example, our uh, mentor, Dr. Jim, has done until now. In summary, uh, Carbonaceous meteorites are not just space rocks. They are a window into the past, revealing the history of the solar system and the potential or origins of, of the life in, here in the Earth. Their study continues to be a cornerstone of the planetary science, geology, and astrobiology. So we, uh, we want to thank to our team, Julia, Ezia, Ibrahim, Gavin, Fergal, Jean, and all our team, because it was an amazing work. It was awesome to work with them. And also, I have learned at all. And it was an amazing experience to us to be part of the YSP in this summer. So thank you so much to everyone. And if you have any questions, so we're going to hit it. Yay, awesome. Great job. I see we have one question. I want one hand up already. Reminder, you can raise your hand and I'll call on you or ask questions in the chat. The first question is from Clayton. Yeah, uh, first of all, uh, great presentation. Congrats. And I don't know if you could explain a bit more of what is this um, FTICRMS, SM? I don't know. Yes. Okay, I got that one. Mm. Uh, so uh, at first, when we started the project, I looked at that abbreviation and I kind of freaked out. And then looking further to what it means, it, it stands for Fourier Transform Ion Cyclotron Resonance Mass Spectrometry. So in other words, without using complicated words, is in simplistic way to say of uh, they measure tiny molecules with a magnetic field, and those give you really high resolution and precise uh, numbers. Um, the reason why that is super important for it, this project is because meteorites have so many different types of chemicals and biological, and, and like there's so many different types of data and we needed something so precise. That's why the National you know, High Magnetic Field uh, Laboratory in Tallahassee the, with uh, Dr. Chen, she's the one that like used that technique to give us more precise insight on the meteorite samples. So that's what it basically does is a magnetic field that spins around ions and calculates the mass of this, giving us like super high resolution and precise uh, data. Oh, okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Awesome. Any other questions? Uh, yes, we have one on the chat that says, did you use data from micrometeorites? Uh, well, in this case, uh, that we reviewed all the data, no. So, uh, because we have sample hands and some thin sections, so it's pretty difficult to use uh, micrometeorites because in geology and geochemistry and analysis and the chemicals, uh, we need a lot of samples to analyze them. So we we didn't use that. And that's the answer. <laughs> Thank you. Did you have any experience coding beforehand or did you learn how to develop the Python script to automate your process during the summer? Um, I'm a computer science major. Gotcha. <laughs> and Python is like my main language. So it was pretty gotcha. fun to do, but I didn't know how to use, use that before. So yeah. it was it was nice to learn. And it was an amazing experience because I have never been exposed to geology at all. So it was great. And Daniela knows a lot about geology. so. A cool merger of interdisciplinary skills yeah. to solve a problem. That's fantastic. Yes. Thank you. That's awesome.